Hey man, you can know your watch. So it is in the news that JPS is being audited. Meanwhile, Miss Winsome and JPS have said, Oh, we welcome this audit. We're a transparent company. We have nothing to hide. As a matter of fact, we see this as an opportunity for our customers to finally understand how their bills are generated. And listen, all of that is BS. All of that is crap. Jamaica is the only place where me familiar with, the only jurisdiction where me know where the cost of fuel is only reflective of what's going on on the world market when the cost of fuel is going up. If the cost of fuel stays the same, it's not reflected in Jamaica. Worse, if the cost of fuel on the world market are go down, we now see that they decline. Zin, Jamaicans are going to endure either the cost of fuel standing firm like the Rock of Gibraltar or it is going to be going up. Furthermore, if the cost of fuel stays the same or is going to be declined for a long period of time or a relatively long period of time, what the JPS and other companies who have these kind of fuel-based bills will do is use it as an opportunity, capitalize on it to introduce another processing fee or some other fee of the sort that is to the expense obviously of the poor who pull out of their bosom and pay to this company on a monthly basis to make sure someone light on in them house. The people who are conducting the audit are no better than they. They too get their cut. We feel like so the powers of this world align themselves so that they can exhaust the resources of the poor, so that they can exploit the poor, so that they can extort the poor. That's just how I feel. Um, yeah, get audited, so what? Who cares? For all we know, this is a political move. At the end of the day, whatever carcass and skeleton you have in the closet, the same place the auditor come come find it, or the same place him leave it. Whatever murky, muddled mess you have going under your carpet, the same place the auditor come come find it, or the same place him leave it, and the Jamaican people will continue to be financially raped by companies like the Jamaica Public Service. That's how I see it. Viewers and subscribers, some of the things that this person had said, I agreed with some of the things that this person had said, you see? I said some, not everything. You see what I'm saying to you? You see? Because, you know, over the years, I saw news reports out there about the persons complaining about the Jamaica Public Service Company electricity bills saying that it is too high, you know? Some of these reports gave me the understanding that the persons are saying that uh, the size house are houses that they are living in don't match the size of bill or bills that they're getting. You see what I'm saying to you? You see me? Some of, the, some of these reports gave me the understanding that persons are saying that the amount of appliances or electrical things that they have in their house or houses, you see me? It don't match the size bill or bills they're getting. They are saying that it is just too much or it is too big. Yeah, so this person said some things and you know, some of the things that this person said, I, I, I agree with some of the things that this person has said, you know. This person said something about financially raped, you know. Um, you know, that term, you know, I mean, it, it sounds new to me, you know what I mean? But, you know, it, it, it is something that is really not a joke, but it just made me have a laugh, really. But anyways, viewers and subscribers, you know, I just presented to you a video that shows a person talking about Jamaica Public Service Company being audited and he went on to talk about other things as well, all right? So I bring it to you, my viewers and subscribers, so that you can hear some of the things that this person had said and you can also tell me what to think about some of the things that this person had said, all right? All right, now, um, I'm going to move on to another video right about now, viewers and subscribers. Actually, I'm going to leave this video with you, my viewers and subscribers. This video is going to show a person who goes by the name of Oliver Samuels. Yes, Oliver Samuels. Yeah, he's a Jamaican comedian. Viewers and subscribers, in my point of view, Oliver Samuels is the king of Jamaican or Jamaica comedy. In my point of view. Oliver Samuels is the king of Jamaica comedy to me. You see me? So big up yourself, Oliver Samuels. Now, this video is going to show Oliver Samuels um, answering questions to a person who is talking in the background of the video. You understand me? 
Please bear in mind that I am only presenting to you, my viewers and subscribers, just a piece of an entire video that is out on social media. And I'm presenting to you a piece of that video that is out on social media so that you can hear some of the things that Oliver Samuels had said. And, you know, in this video, Oliver talk a little bit about himself and, you know, he talk about other things as well, isn't it? Now, I'm going to leave this video with you, my viewers and subscribers, you know? I hope you enjoyed this video and, you know, you can leave your comments and let me know what you think about Oliver Samuels. You see what I'm saying to you? I think he's the king of Jamaica comedy. You see me? You can let me know what you think about uh, what I just said, alright? And you can also let me know what you think about the whole JPS thing you know jamaica public service company being audited and other things as well you can let me know what you think in the comment section about um that whole topic there too all right well anyways here is the video that shows oliver samuels and until the next time my name is dancer skiller uno big up on yourself yes it the great great oliver samuels welcome to new jersey very big thank you to you sir <laughs> when i drove in here i did not immediately recognize you because they told me oliver is celebrating 70 years yes and i saw a 35 year old man standing outside the east orange high school how you managed to look like 35 oliver me laugh, I me love, I me not carry no enmity, and me heart against nobody. I me not walk and trust people things. <laughs> <laughs> so me sleep on me bed at night time. Nice, that is <laughs> wonderful, man. No, a lot of people have always known that you're there. They know you. Many of them know you from Oliver, your large series. Yeah. Others knew you before at LTM. Right. Some think your drop pilot dropped you from helicopter. <laughs> Where were you born? Tell me about your early background. My early background, I was born in Highgate, um, St. Mary. Well, on, on a banana plantation called Tremolesworth. And um, I grew up there until I was uh, a prime, I went to primary school there, no, no. And then we moved, while I was at primary school, we moved into Highgate, which in an area called Harmony Hall. Then I got a scholarship from my primary school, Rosebank Primary, to Dintil Technical High School. I went to Dintil, came out, went job hunting, worked at the Water Commission for like, actually I worked at the Gleaner. Really? For half a day. What happened? <laughs> How did you get to the green? And How was, was your departure so rapid? I, <laughs> I was, um, I went there as a trainee through freedom. Uh, but then, you know, they were insisting on us signing, signing a contract. And because in my head, I knew I wanted to be in theater and the job was a night job. I said, no, I would not sign. So when I went for lunch that day, I decided I wouldn't go back. Really? Yeah. Do you know? Do you remember who was the editor then? No. Would it no, no, have no, been no. Seely? No, it was. I think Seely was still there. Seely was there, but it could have been Seely. Yeah, Theodore Seely. Yes. Yeah. So how did theater and comedy? How did your journey to becoming a legend begin? <laughs> A legend. Yes, man, you're large. Um, when I got into the, the, the little theater movement, I um, had established a theater school. Because in truth and fact, the Fowlers were very, very um, forward thinkers. They were great forward thinkers. And so... Were they Jamaicans? Were they born in Jamaica? Or did they come in from elsewhere? They were born in Jamaica. Of the of the plantocracy, and we're talking about Henry and, and Greta. Greta Fowler, yes. Uh -huh. And so um, they started the school, and I got in. My first teacher was Sam Walters, an Englishman. And um, where was the school located? At the little theatre, and um, it went on until government, through I'm sure the instrumentality of the late Rex Stephenson decided that it was time to establish um, a 
cultural center where all art forms were taught like the, you know drawings they have um music drill, drill making dance theater and all of that would come together poetry and everything and so that was that was so the school sh went over into that complex and I, I i was there i was there but at that time i started performing through the little theater movement and um, this would have been about what year lord of mercy i tricked my imagination up um about 19 let me tell you not 18 <laughs> Not in the 80s. <laughs> Not in the 1800s. <laughs> um, about 1971, 72. Oh, that recent. Yes, and so um, I started with in the pantomime as a trainee actor in in pirate. No, in Queenie's daughter. I saw Queenie's daughter. Daughter, yes. Wasn't Pauline Stone? And Queen's daughter, Orleans, or was it Hill Columbus? Uh, it was Hill Columbus. It was Hill Columbus. Miss Lou and Mars ran, and it felt so wonderful to be on stage with people of those theatrical luminaries. Right. And um, I did that, and my career began to just blossom. I started getting advertising to do and everything, and. So I continued at the school until I got the feeling that I would never graduate because then the structure was not really formalized. And so I left and went on, on the broader stage of life. Right, yeah. Mm. Now tell me about the Olive Oil You Lad series because that resonated like nothing else in Jamaica had up until that point. Up until now. Um, I was in Trevor Own Schools Out at the Barn Theatre, mm -hmm. and this gentleman from Canada came and he saw the show, and at the end of the show he said, with your brilliance you should be on, 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 on television. And we talked and he said, I'm going to get you on television. And he told me he was leaving the island, but when he came back, when he returned, he would have um, see how he could get me on it. And then he came, and when he came, I was working at the office of the Prime Minister with Babsy Grange at the time, and he saw me, and he recognized me, and he said, we have to get to work. And and he really went to work. He went and he spoke to Babsy. Babsy spoke to Gloria Lanaman, and it was a call. And we did, we did about five vignettes, those five-minute things. And it just took over the entire island. And so the Jamaican people demanded that they want um, a television series. And so we went for Oliver at Large. Aston Cook wrote most of it at the t is Aston. No, Aston did the vineyards, but Patrick Brown wrote most of the, the, the half hour ones. Hey, my you, you know you watch. Dance, dance, dance. Hey yo, hey, Skiller! You are watching Dance on Skillet, Tint.